Good morning. Can everybody hear me and see me okay? We're doing a different doing the service with a different laptop this morning. So uh, anything that can go wrong probably will go wrong, but I'm glad you can see me for the moment. So very warm welcome this morning. I want to start by saying a big thank you to Vanessa Bird yesterday uh, for doing a brilliant talk for us on uh, Zoom um, on art and science and their, um, their kind of mutual development together through the ages, which is absolutely fascinating. And Vanessa has uh, promised to do another talk for us in the future. So uh, do please join us for that. And I apologize uh, for being slightly late to that meeting yesterday morning, but it was great when we got there. And I want to say a very special thank you and welcome to Will Pierce this morning. Hopefully you could hear uh, a bit of organ playing before the service started. Um, Will, is, uh, Will lives at Goblins Farm and is the grandson of uh, Marilyn. Um, uh, and oh. Pierce is there. Uh, and Will is also a senior organ scholar organ. at Peterhouse College in Cambridge in his third year. Uh, and Will has very kindly offered to go on to a playing rota with Francis and Michael Pound to can keep the music flowing at St Mary's for the uh, foreseeable future, we hope. Um, and hopefully, when, we, uh, when we're through this period of lockdown, we can again get the choir back into church and with Will's help and Francis' help and Michael's help, we can really start to get the music and our worship now, going but... again. So thank you, Will, for playing here uh, this morning. And I did send out a quick email this morning about 10 past nine. You, you may not have seen it. Just reminding everyone that if you want to, uh, you're very welcome to get yourself a bowl of water to have uh, near you this morning, because today we are remembering the baptism of Christ. Now, the Church of England only has two official sacraments, Holy Communion and Baptism. And today, perhaps unusually, we are remembering both together. And perhaps even more unusually, we're remembering them both slightly virtually. So in normal circumstances, we would gather around the font and sign ourselves with the holy water to remember our own baptisms. But because we can't do that today, you are warmly invited to uh, do that at home. But please don't spill your bowl of water over your computer. I can't be held liable for any baptism related accidents. Lovely to see you. Let's start our service this morning. And so we meet on this baptism of Christ in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord of glory be with you. We pray our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. And so let us pray that we may be faithful to our baptism. Amen. 
eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit. Grant to us, who are born again of water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so may I speak this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I started trying to write this sermon on Thursday morning, not quite knowing how the world would look <clears throat> whenever, or indeed, <coughs> excuse me, if ever, I finished writing it. Never mind by the time we came to this morning. Now, generally speaking, I try not to talk about the sermon writing process when I come to preach. After all, when you're eating sausages and eggs or tofu for the vegetarians, you don't normally want to know where they've come from or how they've been produced. But I don't mind saying to you that this is the hardest time I've ever known to try and write. After 10 months of the ups and downs of dealing with the COVID situation, which have included us isolating twice because of family members having symptoms and not being able to get tests or test results quickly. This third lockdown and the other events of this past week has hit me and I'm sure many of you quite hard. 
Why is that, I wonder? Surely I and you should be used to it by now. I think it's because over Christmas, we had the choir back in church, the vaccines were promised, and I dare to hope for a moment that we were on a smooth slope back to normal life. And then of course, like everyone else, we spent the week between Christmas and New Year stuck at home and unable to go and see our family and friends, which was a bit of a downer. And then it was only on Monday of last week that the new national lockdown was imposed. Now my particular struggle with the new lockdown was what to do about in-person worship here in church. Because unlike the first lockdown, the government didn't expressly ban communal worship and the bishops were leaving it up to individual clergy and PCCs. Now, of course, you all know where we got to on that, but as I said in my round robin email, no one gets ordained in order to ask people not to come to church. So it's been a real, almost existential issue. I've no regrets about reaching that decision and doing so quickly in all the circumstances, but I can tell you that it gives me no particular joy to be back in an empty church building once again. Now I know, before you tell me, that the true church is the living stones. Who are you out there? But that doesn't make it any less empty in here. I want nothing more than to have you living stones back here and for this place to resonate with your voices and your presence once again. But the new lockdown has also had other personal implications such as the children being at home from school, possibly for many weeks again, and considerable uncertainty about Annabelle and her exams going forward. And that was just on Monday and Tuesday. Now, Wednesday morning was a good productive time in church, not only celebrating communion, albeit on my own into a camera, but being able to serve at least five different families who came to, came to avail themselves of our food bank. Although it's tragic, almost criminal, that we have to do that, I'm glad that we were able to do that. But on Wednesday evening, which for me was last night as I write this sermon, we had those incredible images from Washington DC of the mob urged on by Trump invading the Capitol building. Such sights I never thought to see outside of some kind of disaster movie. People wearing Nazi t-shirts, carrying Confederate flags, that flag of oppression and slavery, and storming the home of American democracy whilst elected senators feared for their lives. Unbelievable. Now by Thursday afternoon, Things in America appear to have calmed down a bit, and Congress has certified Joe Biden as the next president. Although what Trump's next move is going to be, of course, is still anyone's guess. But then the new COVID death figures were released. On Thursday, we had 1,100 people that die in that one day. Half, the, half of the residents in a Crowhurst care home, we were told, died over Christmas. And then on Friday, it was 1,300 people died. On Saturday, another, another 1,000 people died. It was tough, tough to concentrate on writing a sermon. There's just too much big stuff going on all the time. But something else happened on Thursday at four o'clock, I'm glad to say. I joined a Zoom call with 55 fellow priests, members of the Sodality of Mary, many of whom were based in the United States of America, and we prayed together for the healing of that nation. And as we prayed together, I was, to use C.S. Lewis's phrase, surprised by joy. Our two readings today have one person in common. That person who's common between the two readings was not Paul or Apollos or John the Baptist, and it wasn't even Jesus. The one person, and I use the term advisedly, who appears in both the reading from the book of Acts and the gospel of Mark is God the Holy Spirit. And God the Spirit appears in the context of baptism. In the book of Acts, Paul returned to Ephesus, which is in modern day Turkey, and there he spoke to 12 followers of Jesus who had previously been baptized. It doesn't expressly say that they had been baptized by Apollos, who has gone off to Corinth, but that is a strong implication. But it turned out that those disciples knew nothing 
about the Holy Spirit and that they had only received the baptism of John, as they put it. So Paul baptised them again, presumably using the Trinitarian formula of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And this time, the Holy Spirit arrived in power for them and they started prophesying and speaking in tongues. Why did the baptism of John not work for the disciples in Ephesus? Well, we can only speculate, but in today's gospel reading, John the Baptist himself said that his baptism was only with water, whereas Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Of course, John's baptism worked for Jesus, but then the whole Trinity was present. So John feels almost redundant in that process. Why did Jesus need to receive John's baptism of repentance? Of course, when he was without sin. Again, without knowing the inner mind of God, we can only speculate, but we know that the one who is without sin would take on the sin of the whole world. And importantly, as Jesus was baptised with water, so he was also visited by the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove and the voice of the Father announcing that this is the beloved Son. And so today we're remembering not only the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan, but also the re-baptism with the Holy Spirit of those 12 disciples in Ephesus. And of course, also remembering our own baptisms and what they mean for us and for the world. And when we remember our own baptisms, we are viscerally reminded that we follow where Jesus has gone before in this and in all things. We are baptised with water and the Spirit, because he was so baptised first. We share bread and wine because he commanded us to do likewise. And we shall be resurrected because he led the way into resurrection. And we are lifted up into the life of God because of Jesus' ascension. But today, we should especially remember that because of our baptisms, performed in the name of the Trinity, we too receive the Holy Spirit, that very same person of God who alighted on Mary, on Jesus, on the disciples in Ephesus, on the church gathered at Pentecost, and on the church throughout time. The Holy Spirit dwells within all the baptized, bringing forth fruits and gifts, which include not only prophecy and tongues, but also joy. And when we make space and time for God, chiefly through prayer, so those gifts and fruits can show more and more fully in our lives. So whilst it's undoubtedly been a difficult, sometimes shocking, and sometimes depressing week, on the whole I have kept praying by myself, with others on Facebook, which is a constant joy, and with my sodality priestly friends. It's only through that constant cycle of prayer and the constant exposure to the Psalms and the scripture that we remain constantly exposed to God and the work of the Holy Spirit within us. And that is why, in the midst of it all, we can still be surprised by joy. So remember your baptism. Remember that the Holy Spirit dwells in you because of your baptism. That Holy Spirit draws us together and points us always towards Jesus, who lifts us up to the Father. Pray constantly and ask the Holy Spirit to bring forth all the gifts and fruits that he has in store for you. And be prepared to be surprised by joy. Amen. And so now having uh, spoken about remembering all those baptisms, including ours, we're now going to symbolically uh, reenact and remember our baptisms. If you haven't yet got a bowl of water to hand and you want to go and get one, now will be a good time. And I shall come round and uh, have a little mini font at the front of the altar. God in Christ gives us water, welling up for eternal life.
with joy. You will draw water from the well of salvation. We pray to God. Lord, give us this water, and we shall thirst only. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise for us. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and Father, we give you thanks and praise for your gift of water in creation, for your spirit sweeping over the waters, bringing light and love, for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, baptized in the river Jordan. We bless you for your new creation, brought to birth by water and the Spirit, and for your grace bestowed upon us, your children, washing away our sins. May your holy and life-giving Spirit move upon these waters, restore through them the beauty of your creation, and bring those who are baptized to new birth in the family of your children. Drown sin in the waters of judgment, Anoint your children with power from on high, and make them one in Christ, in the freedom of your kingdom. For all might, majesty, dominion, and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. And so let us pray. God of truth, you are faithful to the covenant you have made with us. Look in mercy on your people from all our sins, O Lord. Wash us and we shall be clean. We have broken the pledges of our baptism and failed to be your disciples. From all our sins, O Lord. Wash us and we shall be clean. Though we are saved by Christ and dead to sin through the deep waters of death, we have not witnessed to his grace by the manner of our lives. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. If we have shown indifference to those in need and have been afraid to stand up for justice and truth, from all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. We have been slow to forgive and have failed to remember your repeated forgiveness of our sins. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Today we rejoice and give thanks because your son humbled himself to be baptized in the Jordan. Through the waters, you have given us the mystery of baptism for the remission of sins. From all our sins, O oh Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Through water and spirit, you give us new life as the people of God and pour out upon us the gifts of your new covenant. From all our sins, O oh Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Almighty God, in our baptism you have consecrated us to be temples of your Holy Spirit. May we, whom you have counted worthy, Nurture your indwelling spirit and with a lively faith worship ye with upright lives through Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you wish, please take a moment to sign yourselves with the cross from the water you have, and we take a moment of quietness to remember our own baptism. Come, says the Spirit and the Bride. 
Come forward, ye who are thirsty, receive the water of life, the free gift to all who desire it. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So before our prayers of intercession, let's just take a moment of quiet prayer, bringing before God our own baptisms and seeking the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Let's take a moment. Our prayers of intercession. Thank you. Father, we thank you that we can gather to together today in your name. Thank you that you have provided us with the technology and expertise to allow us to worship you collectively. We thank you, Lord, that so many people work tirelessly, tirelessly behind the scenes so that we are able to meet and connect with each other despite all the current hurdles. We pray, Lord, for those who are searching to make some sense of what is happening at the moment. And we thank you that this situation provides an opportunity for people to seek you within the anonymity of their homes. We ask, Lord, that you lead those who are searching for meaning to explore and connect with you and a church community in their locality. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our leaders, our politicians, our emergency services, and the leaders of our schools and colleges. We pray, Lord, that they will seek you and that you will give them wisdom in all the very difficult decisions they need to make on a daily basis. We pray for NHS workers and for staff being seconded from other organisations to help them. We pray for people who have come out of retirement and put their own lives at risk so that they can help administer the vaccine. And we pray, Father, for your protection on all of them and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And in our community in Hadlow, we pray today for all who live in Hailstone Close and Dray Court. And we pray for the family and friends of Bob Greenhead from our community who has recently died. Bless them with your peace, Lord. And from our Book of Remembrance, we pray for the families of Barbara Stirrup, Clifford Gibbs, Arthur Pepper, Molly Butler, Peter Waring, John Alvin Pope, and Nora Alice Dumbreck. Lord, we pray for those who are coming to the end of this life. We pray that they and their families know that you are with them and that they are not alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you have provided us with the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that this means that we don't have to rely on our own strength in all that we do, and we can call and rely on you. You know, Lord, how anxious and fearful so many of us are at the moment. Help us, Lord, to put our trust in you. We also thank you, Lord, for the gift of your word. And whilst we are separated from our friends, families, work, and familiar way of life at the moment. We are reminded of the promise you gave to Isaiah when in exile over two and a half thousand years ago. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. 
when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Accept these prayers for the, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's, uh, if you can, let's unmute ourselves now for the peace. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his <coughs> seal upon us. And mm. as a pledge of what is to come, he has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you, Michael. Peace be with you, Michael. Peace be with you, Mark. Peace be with you, Harris. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you, Peace Peace be with you, darling. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. We stay on music for the first three responses to the Eucharistic prayer. Open the heavens, Lord our God, and send your transforming spirit on us and these gifts. May we who are baptized into Christ be ready to share his cup of suffering and strengthen to serve him for it. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks And now we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose willing submission to the way of righteousness is the pattern of our calling. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread, and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised him. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, 
we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Mary, Saint John the Baptist and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world, to share in the body of Christ. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light, and love. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. So we're now going to take a moment of spiritual communion. I shall pray for you and then receive communion. And then Will's just going to play for us while we take a moment to uh, fill that spiritual communion with God in the process, in the person of the Holy Spirit as well this morning. So let us pray. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that though separated by distance, we may still through faith be partakers in the benefit of Christ's offering of his body and his blood. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Thank you.
time and eternity. You opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us spiritually with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's unmute for the blessing as we have an interactive blessing this morning. Unmute. <clears throat> May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. 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 May God the Son, who turned water into wine, at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and may glad your hearts. Amen. Amen. May God the Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts on you, who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. 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 And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We have come to Christ, the living water. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
upstairs. Keep going. I'm going in the room with my cup of tea. Look, you can do it when you come back. Wait.